All right, uh, love ones in Christ, we thank God for such a blessed day like this. I believe that we are alive by the grace and by the message of God. Uh, this very day, I want to uh, share with you, I'm continuing on my teachings, um, spiritual laws. Can we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, speak to our heart in Jesus' name. Amen. So, love ones in Christ, um, as I said, I'm going to continue or continue uh, in my teachings, spiritual laws of God's kingdom. And this one will be spiritual laws of God's kingdom in relation to holiness. Spiritual laws of holiness. Spiritual laws of holiness. And it is uh, our mandate to understand that um, holiness is um, a mandate unto every Christian believer. It's a kind of Christian doctrine that we have to understand that we have different types of Gospels and in the Christian faith or uh, in Christianity or in the house of God, in the kingdom of God, holiness really, really counts. So uh, why should we teach about holiness? Because some churches believe that when you are born again, that is all, you are holy. But uh, there are some biblical doctrine that as a child of God, you must not ignore the concepts, the doctrine, and then the key of holiness. Because holiness is very, very, very important. So why should I teach or why should we uh, Christians um, understand or live in the doctrine of holiness? Or why should even I, as a servant of God, uh, teach about holiness? So I'm going to give you some biblical foundation or some foundational scriptures to let you understand that holiness is a necessity under the grace dispensation. Holiness is what is a necessity under the grace dispensation. The fact that uh, we are justified by faith, uh, all this kind of the gospel of grace, the gospel of uh, prosperity, the gospel of uh, warfare, different kinds of gospel are uh, in our Christendom or in our churches today. If you don't balance the doctrine or the teachings of holiness, it is going to produce carnal Christians and then people who are going to corrupt um, the nation. That is why most unbelievers don't want to uh, become Christians because of some behaviors that they see about some Christians. It is because the body of Christ or some body of Christ are not balancing the gospel. The fact that you are teaching about prosperity, about faith, about evangelism, about grace, about um, all kinds of uh, different gospels, the gospel of holiness is a key concept in the Christian faith. So I'm going to give you some biblical foundation of why or why am I teaching uh, this uh, important Christian doctrine. So in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12, verses uh, number 14. I'm giving you the foundations of why am I teaching the doctrine of holiness. I'm giving you the foundations because without the foundation, you will not know why should I even hear the teachings of holiness. It is very, very important. So in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, the Bible says that follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So we can see from the Holy Scriptures, biblically, uh, some uh, Bible scholars believe that Apostle Paul wrote this uh, epistle or this letter. Some believe um, different authors, um, how do you call it, sealers, and then uh, different people wrote the scripture. But I believe that uh, from my research and then from my uh, studies, I believe that Apostle Paul wrote uh, the book of Hebrews to a sect of Jews, uh, believers, uh, as in the body of Christ. So we can see from the Bible or from the Holy Scripture that the Bible is saying emphatically that all Christians should follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So it is a mandate for all Christians to live in holiness. But I will teach you what holiness really means, but I'm giving you the foundational scripture for you to understand that 
holiness is important holiness is mandatory holiness is part of the christian faith it's part of the christian work it's part of the christian uh, virtue that we must follow to get to god so we can see from the first key foundational scripture that in hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 the bible says that follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord let's come to matthew chapter 5 matthew chapter 5 verses um number uh, 48 matthew chapter 5 verses number 48 be ye therefore perfect even as your father which is in heaven is perfect these are the words of our lord and our master jesus christ speaking plainly that all followers of him if you are a follower of jesus christ if you follow the full steps of jesus christ our lord and our master savior is saying from the holy scripture that we must be perfect as the father who is in heaven is perfect as apostle paul wrote in the book of hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 that without holiness no man shall see the lord without holiness no man shall see the lord without hagios that is the, the, the nature of god the nature of god is holiness when you see god you see total purity in heaven the cherubs uh, they sing holy 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 unto the lord because they see the holiness of god when they see god they see nothing but holiness that is what they see about god and if we are followers of jesus christ and the bible is saying emphatically that it is our duty to be perfect to be complete in jesus christ now there are some i will teach you some of the methods at which christian believers are, can work in holiness now another foundational scripture in the book of second corinthians second corinthians chapter 7 verses uh, number one second corinthians chapter 7 verse number one having therefore these promises dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of god so you can see from the pauline letters to the church in corinth that paul is saying that what every christian must cleanse we must cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit and that we must perfect holiness in the fear of god in the fear of god not in the fear of man in the fear of god because in your secret place that is where god sees and so here we can see from the foundational scripture that it is a mandate unto all christian believers to cleanse we must cleanse ourselves it is our duty to cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh from the corruption of the flesh from the uh, lustful desires of the flesh and of the spirit and that we must perfect the holiness of god the holiness of christ in the fear of god when you get my book how to become a perfect believer in christ jesus it is a free book you can subscribe and then i will send i think there is um, an automatic email that will send it uh, into your email address if you subscribe the book will be sent to you automatically you can just read it it is entitled how to become a perfect believer in jesus christ you read it it will empower you it will give you more wisdom keys on how to work in the holiness of christ it's a free book so child of god get it it will empower you to understand some of the concept of holiness so we have seen from the scriptures that having therefore these promises dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of god in the fear of god let's come to the book of first thessalonians first thessalonians first thessalonians first thessalonians let's come the first thessalonians chapter 4 verses uh, number 7 first Thessalonians chapter 4 verses number 7 for God hath not called us unto uncleanness but unto holiness 
That is what Paul said to the church in Thessalonica. The same Paul who wrote uh, the letters to the Galatians, uh, to the Colossians, and to different churches around the world. The same Paul is balancing the scripture that you see sometimes people just take a portion of the Holy Bible and then they use that portion out of context to create a doctrine in the church. You must understand that the Bible has uh, references. That is why you must study the Bible carefully, get a Bible study tool, and then study the Bible, learn the cross reference, learn the cocoa dance, get a powerful Bible study tool. So you can get Ryrie study Bible tool, you can get Power Bible CD on your laptop, on your devices, get Bibles and then feed on it and ask the Holy Ghost to give you understanding because if you take a context of the scripture and use only that foundational scripture to base your doctrine, to base your faith, child of God, you can make an error because there are some key concepts, there are some key know that you have to know. We have what we call the uh, hermeneutics uh, in theology. You get all those uh, concepts and it will help you. But in this key concept, we can see from the Bible that here Paul is saying in the book of First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 7, that for God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. So you see that you call grace, 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 because we are saved by grace, so we can do anything, we are justified, so we no 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 child of God. God hath not called us unto uncleanness cleanness but he has called us unto what unto holiness so this is one of the reasons why i'm going to teach you about holiness so i'm going to give you seven key points on how to walk or how to live in the holiness of christ i'm going to give you seven key concepts on how or spiritual laws on how to live in the holiness of christ so child of god this is my foundational scripture in hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 as the bible says follow peace after all men and our holiness without which no man shall see the lord as we saw in matthew chapter 5 verse 48 where the bible says uh, that be ye perfect even as your father is uh, perfect as we also saw in the book of uh, second uh, corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 that having therefore these promises dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of god and as in first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 7 where the bible says that but god has not called us unto uncleanness but unto holiness so we have seen this for there are many scripture to back up uh, this foundational scripture but this is enough for you so child of god we have stated from the holy bible not my own words it is the holy bible that is teaching us and letting us that as far as we are still under grace we must still live in holiness we must still walk in holiness so i'm going to give you the seven key concepts on how to walk in holiness so the first key concept on how to walk in holiness is that you must repent and accept jesus christ as your lord and your personal savior because without jesus christ there can't be holiness living outside jesus christ is living in your own goodness or your own morality when you come into jesus christ the blood of jesus christ washes you it cleans you it sets you apart it purges you and make you holy in the sight of the heavenly father the blood of jesus christ has the capacity and the ability to wash you to uh, internally sanctify you before the heavenly father because the heavenly father can never come to you the holy spirit can never assess you without the lenses of the blood of jesus christ so when you repent repentance simply means that what a change of mind you have to change your mind you have to uh change direction and then return unto god and that maybe you are doing something that is not good you say no i am not doing that i have stopped those things i am going back to jesus that is repentance maybe you are in a behavior you are in an attitude you are doing something that does not agree with the word of god you say i am stopping it because 
The Bible says so. That is repentance, a change of mind, a change of thought, a change of action, a change of attitude, a change of behavior, a change of character. And you come unto Christ and then yield yourself as a living sacrifice unto him. So the first key point for you to enter into the realm of holiness is by confessing, accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal savior by accepting jesus christ as your lord and your personal savior the blood of jesus christ will wash you the blood of jesus christ will cleanse you and then sanctify you and then you shall be holy but that is not the all stage you have to proceed to the next stage of holiness of righteousness because god is holy the Holy Ghost is perfectly holy. The Holy Ghost cannot live in a sinful vessel. The Holy Ghost cannot live in a dirty vessel. The Holy Ghost cannot live in a, a corrupted vessel. When the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses the body, then he can come in into your soul to live into your heart. That is why it is a spiritual transaction. It is a, tr a spiritual word, journey. That you cannot see with your physical eye it goes on in the realms of the spirit that as soon as you confess jesus christ as your lord and your personal savior child of god the holy ghost gets the access when he sees the blood because in heaven there are three that bear witness that is the word that is the blood and then it all goes in that way so when the blood when the word when the water when they see the blood they must come into you and then live in the inside of you so the first key point the first key revelation the first spiritual law for you to get the garments of the helm or the um, garment of holiness is to what is to submit yourself is to repent and then come unto Jesus Christ when you come unto Jesus Christ then the blood of the lamb will purify you and make you pure in the sight of the father that is the first key point. That is the first uh, direction. The second key point about our holiness on how to work or the spiritual laws of holiness has to do with your internal heart, with your heart. Because it is out of the heart that sin emanates. If your heart is not pure in the sight of God, child of God, you can perfect a Pharisee type of holiness. You can be maybe you commit fornication maybe with your flesh maybe you don't do this but the heart is the most important thing the holy ghost needs our heart so the second key point for you to perfect holiness to walk in the holiness of christ is that you must yield your heart unto god let us read in the book of matthew chapter 5 matthew chapter 5 matthew chapter 5 verses number 17 matthew chapter 5 verses number uh, 17 matthew chapter 5 verse 17 all right let's come to all right matthew chapter 5 verse 17 think not that i am come to destroy the law or the prophet i am not come to destroy but to fulfill okay let's come to the verse 16 of matthew 5 verse uh, 16 matthew chapter 5 uh, verse 16 uh, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works um, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, when you come to the whole scripture of uh, the place in Matthew 5, verse 15, uh, Jesus Christ talks about what? Ye are the light of the world. That is Matthew 5, 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Verse 15. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick that it may light on all that are in the house. So we get a key concept here that the heart is a very, very, very important uh, key concept. That out of the heart proceeded evil thought. Out of the heart comes of a uh, strife. Out of the heart come out uh, envying you see when your heart is not full of god's word when your heart is corrupted when your heart is full of our uh, evil deeds child of god you cannot stand uh, before god because god needs the heart god wants the heart 
God wants to set your heart apart for him to work within it. Because in Matthew chapter 5, verses um, number 18, Jesus said that, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come out from the heart, and they defile the man. Verse 19, For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies, these are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. So we can see that Jesus Christ is saying that out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts like murders, like adultery, like fornication, like false witness, blasphemy. So when your heart is not spared, when your heart is not crucified, when your heart has not been submitted unto the Holy Ghost to work and then to stand for God, all the time there will be jealousy in your heart. The invisible sins will corrupt the entire being of your soul. And as you are walking, you are full of bitterness. You are full of unforgiveness. You are full of strife. You are full of anger. You are full of uh, murder. Because when your heart is not with the Holy Spirit, child of God, you cannot perfect holiness because your soul must be pure. Your soul must be sanctified. Your soul must be purged. Your soul must be holy in the sight of God. Because when your heart has not been conformed, if your heart has not been be, be taken charge by the hands of the Lord, child of God, you cannot walk in holiness. Jesus needs the heart. Jesus wants the heart. He said, my son, give me your heart. So if you want to walk in the holiness of Christ as a child of God, understand that the second key concept is your heart. It is like when you go into a cemetery, most often when they prepare uh, maybe a, a corpse and then they will bury the corpse uh, in, uh, let's say, in the coffin, they can design the coffin very nicely. You see the coffin is very nice, uh, all kind of designs, but inside the coffin, it is a rotten body in the coffin. There are some worms inside the body. It is like a believer whose heart has not been sanctified. You can show outward holiness, but in the inside of you, in your heart, in your spirit, in your soul, it is full of anger. It is full of pride. It is full of unforgiveness. It is full of strife. It is full of jealousy like a coffin with a dead body inside it, outside the casket, outside the coffin, we can see this very beautiful, very nice, very welcoming, very um, open, and then very um, approachable. But if you open the corpse, it is too smelly. It is smooth, uh, too kind of nasty. That is how holiness works in the child of God. Until your heart is sanctified and purged, until your heart has been submitted unto the hands of God, until your heart is turned around unto God, until your heart is in for Jesus Christ, child of God, the holiness is not perfected, or else you will be like a Pharisee or like a, a modern Pharisee or a religious unbeliever just in the church, going to church, or a nominal Christian just trying to ask like a Christian, but meanwhile, you are a hypocrite. You will be like a wolf in a sheep clothing, and it's very, very dangerous. So, child of God, understand that the heart is very, 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 very important. As Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 19, that for out of the heart proceeded evil thought, murders, adultery. So, in your heart, it is full of murder. When you stand against somebody, when you want to kill somebody, when you are angry about somebody, murder develops in your heart. Because when you are angry with your brother, the Bible says that you are a murderer. When you lust after a lady in your heart, the Bible calls you uh, an adulterer, a fornicator. Because if you see a lady and you lust after her in your heart, child of God, inside the heart, there is a transaction. So that is why when David saw Bathsheba bathing, 
David lasted over Bathsheba, who was Uriah's wife. And then David went and then slept on with the lady. And it led to uh, killing. David commanded his servant Joab and then they sent Uriah to a very stronger battlefield uh, center. And David wanted to cover the issue, but he tried several times to cover it. But Uriah did not sleep with uh, his wife Bathsheba. And David had to assassinate an innocent man of God. So you see that when David developed the lust for Bathsheba, he went in and then slept with Bathsheba. That is how the heart works. If the heart is not for God, if the heart is not for the Holy Spirit, if the heart has not been purged, child of God, it is going to work against you. So that is the second key point about holiness. That is the second key point about holiness. So child of God, don't be ignorant. Work on your heart. I will teach you on how to work on your heart as time goes on. The third key on how to work in the holiness of Christ is the word. Is by feeding on the word of God, by sanctifying yourself in the word of God. The word of God is pure. The word, the Holy Bible, the Logos, the Bible says in 1 Peter 2 verse 2 that as newborn babies, we must desire the sincere milk of the word that we can grow thereby. So when the word of God enters our soul, it has the capacity and the ability to transform our heart, to purge our heart, to renew our soul, to renew our mindset, to break the bad concept, to break the bad ideology, to break the bad philosophy, to create in us a new heart. That is why Paul says that what? Renew your mind with the word of God. So when the word of God enters you, when it enters your soul, it can transform you. It can mold you. It can make you act like Jesus because the wisdom of God is hidden inside the word of God. If you want to know the mind of God, if you want to know the wisdom of God, it is hidden inside the Holy Scripture. So the more that we feed on the Word of God, the more that we meditate on the Word of God, the more that we take in the Word, the more that we are able to sanctify. Jesus said, oh, sanctify them in thy Word, because thy Word is what? It's truth. Jesus Christ himself, he sanctified himself through the Word. So, as a Christian believer, if you want to walk in the holiness of Christ, never ignore the word of God. Because the word of God is sharper. It is quick. It is sharper than any two-edged sword that it pierces even to the dividing ascender of the soul and the spirit. The word of God has the ability and the capability to judge the thought of our soul and then the thought of our spirit. So when you take in the word of God, you are taking in a food for the soul. You are taking in a food for the inner man. The food for the inner man is the word of God. As our flesh needs physical food and water to survive. The same applies to our soul that when we take in the word of God, the word of God can transform us, it can break us, it can mold us, it can sharpen us, it can empower us. The word of God has the authority to break every strongholds of our mind. Maybe in your, in your family, in your tradition, in your family, uh, in your workplace, in the school, wherever you find yourself, they have built a kind of mindset in you. Maybe your father has said that maybe for guys are all bad, maybe girls are all bad. They have given you some bad ideology and therefore this bad mindset is always confusing you and so you cannot think straight. When you take in the word of God, it's like a medicine that will work in the inside of you. The word of God is like an antivirus that any virus in the inside of your spirit, it can break away. It can delete. It can format every virus in your soul. So child of God, if you want to walk in the holiness of Christ, you must understand the key concept of what? Of the word. Understand the key concept of the word. As the Bible says in the book of John chapter 17, verses number 17, that what? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them through what? Thy truth. 
thy word is truth. So child of God, it is the truth that can set you free. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And the truth is the word of God, is the Holy Bible, the Holy Scriptures. The more that you take in the word, the more that you are taking in Jesus, because Jesus is the living word. When you take in the word, you are taking in more of the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost and the word always agree. When you see Jesus, you have seen the Holy Ghost. So, child of God, the moment you take in the word of God, you feed in the word of God, you proclaim the word of God, you walk in the light of God, you are able to take in the power and then the strength of the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost becomes full in the inside of you, you are able to walk in the holiness of Christ. Child of God, the word of God is full of power. It is full of light. It is full of wisdom. It is full of authority. Take in the word of God for you to walk in the holiness of Christ. It is a spiritual key that you must not ignore as a child of God. I wish I can take you through more deeper keys on the word because the word of God is full of life. It is full of light. It is full of wisdom. So child of God, never neglect the word of God in the concept of holiness, in the concept of purity, in the concept of sanctification, of righteousness, because the kingdom righteousness is based on the word of God. And if you want to work in the kingdom righteousness, it is the word. Every kingdom has rules and regulations. Every kingdom has constitution that they follow. And as Christians, our kingdom constitution is the word of God. That is why Jesus said that we should seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness not your right but his righteousness so when we seek the kingdom righteousness it is through the word of god the kingdom constitution is the word of god so child of god if you want to walk in the holiness of jesus christ it is by obedience through the word of god it is by following the word of god that is why apostle paul says the word we must take in the word of god we must feed in the word of God. Say that, be ye not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewal of the mind. Sometimes some Christians act like unbelievers. They behave like unbelievers. They talk like unbelievers. They, they, they do things like unbelievers because they, their soul has not been transformed with the word of God. They have not renewed their mind with the word of God. It is like they are baby Christians, they are nominal Christians because they don't have time with the word of God. Child of God, if you want to walk in the holiness of Christ, then never ignore the power and the authority and the key concept of the word. When you take in the word of God, you are able to walk in the uh, path of Christ. So that's the key point about it. The next key point or the fourth point on how to walk in the um, concept of Christ or holiness it means that you must have time to fellowship with the Holy Spirit have time to fellowship with the Holy Ghost you see that the Holy Spirit is our helper he's our teacher he's our father he's our guide he's our judge he's our prophet so the more that we have time with the Holy Ghost through spiritual songs through our praises through prayer child of god you build a consistent fellowship with the holy ghost when you get my book how to walk with the holy spirit how to train your human spirit how to walk and live in the spirit how to grow in the realms of the spirit is a five-fold book on how to walk in the uh, spirit concept i wrote that book specially for you so child of god if you want to walk in the path of Christ, then you must never ignore the fellowship. It's what is a fellowship, a communion that you must have time with the Holy Ghost in your room, in your place, in your office. Have time, worship God, praise God, honor God. The more that we worship and praise God and have time with the Holy Ghost, we are building our soul. We are building our inner man. We are building our spirit to become more stronger to walk with God. The more that we have time with the Holy Ghost, the more that we become more sensitive to His leadership. So, child of God, if you want to walk 
in the path and in the holiness of Jesus Christ, then learn how to build a fellowship through spiritual songs, through prayer, pray in the Holy Ghost, as you are praying in the Holy Ghost, as you are praying in your uh, quiet place, as you are praying in that corner, as you are singing and praising God, child of God, it will empower you, it will empower you powerfully. When you get my book, How to Worship God in Spirit and in Truth, it will help you powerfully. How to Worship God in Spirit and in Truth. So child of God, learn to have time with the Holy Ghost as the Bible says in the book of Philippians uh, chapter 2 verse number 1, Philippians uh, chapter 2 verse number 1, it talks about that if therefore, um, Philippians 2 verse 1, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any flesh of the Spirit, mm, so we see the key concept here, we must have time to connect with the Holy Ghost. So we must fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We must have time with the Holy Spirit. We must negotiate. We must sit down and then connect with Him. It's a fellowship. Sit down with Him. He's a person. The Holy Ghost has a personality. It's not only like a wind or maybe like a fire. No, He's a person that carries a presence. The Holy Ghost is a divine person. You can talk to Him. You can act, do a, a faith action. Put a chair beside you. Believe that the Holy Ghost is there. Talk to him as you're talking to your father. Have faith that you are talking to somebody. He hears you. He knows you. I do that most often. Sometimes when I'm praying, I put a chair beside me. I reason with God. I tell God that God, I need this thing. Help me. Direct me. Guide me. Give me wisdom. I talk to him personally like, like a friend, like a father. Because he is my guide. So we can have time and then fellowship with him. In Ephesians chapter 5 verses uh, number 19 Ephesians chapter 5 verses uh, number 19 it says speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and making melody in your heart to the Lord so we must speak to ourselves in psalms in hymns and spiritual songs so it's a key point as a child of God to understand that spiritual songs are very very important it is not any other song it must be a biblical song an anointed song a song full of the holy ghost a song that can charge your inner man because there are some songs there are some secular music it can corrupt your soul it can uh ginger you it can even make you seductive so it is a spiritual song, a song that emanates from the Holy Ghost, a song that is based on the Word of God, a song that will empower you to increase your zeal and your love for God. As the Bible says in 1 Samuel that when uh, David began to play his, his harp, the evil spirit tormenting King Saul left King Saul. So in the power of the music, it drove away the evil spirit tormenting King Saul. So in the power of music, in the power of Christian music, faithful Christian music, anointed Christian music, a song that will empower you, that will lead you, that will strengthen you, that will uh, uh, upgrade you to serve God like never before, have time and then sing unto God, worship God and praise God. As you are doing that, you are fellowshipping with the Holy Ghost and it will empower you to walk in holiness. So child of God, never neglect this key concept. It will help you, it will empower you. To walk in holiness now in Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 the Bible says um, that let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your heart to the Lord mm. so we must admonish ourselves in psalms in hymnals and what and spiritual songs singing with grace in your heart to the lord so you see how paul is saying to the church in uh, colossi here that we have to understand that we are also part of the church in colossi that we christian believers must also have time to sing and to glorify god in our heart it's a kind of holiness key concept Whatever I'm teaching you, I do it most of the time. Most often, 
I worship God, I praise God, I honor God. It helps, it boosts my faith. It empowers me to become more spiritual. I love to worship God. I love to praise God from my heart. Sometimes I can be in my room, you will never hear me even uh, praising God, but I am praising God from my heart. I even connect my earpiece uh, to my laptop, sometimes to my phone, and I'll own a powerful Christian uh, worship or praises, and I'll just give thanks to God. I'll just be blessing God. Father, I'm taking you. Father, thank you for your mercy, for your grace in my life. And sometimes I can even cry unto God. I, I, I just praise God from my heart. It boosts me in the spirit. It empowers me to become more spirit-filled and more spirit-led and more spirit-taught. So, child of God, it is a key concept that you must learn that if you want to walk in the holiness of Christ, then you must learn how to have time with the Holy Ghost by spiritual songs and by prayer and by prayer. So, child of God, get a key concept there. The next key on holiness is about all. It's about keeping your tongue and then the eye. Keeping your tongue and your eye. Because uh, you see that our eye is a connector to our spirit and our soul. Our tongue is also a connector to our spirit and our soul. Whatever that you speak, you see that death and life are in the power of the tongue. So child of God, if you want to control yourself, if you want to walk in the path of Christ, if you want to walk in holiness of Christ, then your tongue must be kept at all times. Because if you can keep your tongue, you can keep your whole body. I got it. If you can keep your tongue, you can keep your whole body. Not my own words. In the book of James, chapter 3, verse number 1. James 3, verse number 1 down was, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive greater condemnation. Verse 2. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. So you see the key concept here. If any man, James chapter 3 verse 2. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle his whole body. The whole body. So if you have the ability to keep your tongue. People provoke you, but you still keep your tongue. The Bible says that you can keep your whole body. Because the tongue can trigger your body. The tongue connects you with your mind. The tongue will trigger you to do something that is not either good or bad if you can control your tongue child of god you are able to walk in wisdom because a wise person most often does not talk at any time at any moment he knows when to talk and how to talk and then what to say and how to say it so sometimes the devil or some friends or some people who maybe in your community maybe in your workplace uh, in the college, uh, in the house, the enemy can use your friends to provoke you. And if you are not careful, you might speak something that will make you a uh, sin because it is what that comes out of you that makes you evil. So all the time, the devil wants to provoke you to speak something that will provoke you. And here, Apostle James is saying that if you can keep your whole tank, if you can keep your whole tongue, if you can keep your tongue, child of God, you can control your whole body. You can control your sexual feelings. You can control uh, when someone even tries to push you because your tongue controls everything. Now in verse 3, in the same James, say that, Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. So sometimes, you see, when, when horses are going for races, you see that the one on the horses will put some kind of, um, how they call it, some bits in the horse mouth to control the horse. Without that bit, the one sitting on the horse cannot control uh, the horse. So with that uh, bit, he can tell the horse, pass this way, 
he control him to pass left, to pass right, or to take any direction. That is how our tongue controls our whole body. If you can keep your tongue, you can control any part of your body. So, child of God, it is what a key as a believer that you want to walk in holiness, then you must learn how to keep your tongue and to help you uh, walk in that way. So, in verse 5, the Bible says that even so, the tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindled. Verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and set it on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. So with your tongue, you can defile your whole body. You can speak a word and it can even contaminate your soul because words affect our soul. You see, the way that you speak, it affects your inner man. When someone maybe uh, touches your body or when, when it touch a fire, you feel the burning sensation in your body. The same applies to your soul that when someone speaks words to you, it touches your soul. It touches your inner man. That is why sometimes when someone speaks to you, you become sad, you become angry, you become maybe frustrated, you become maybe uh, convicted. The word has touched your soul. The word has convicted your soul. The word is like a weapon that has heated you. That is why you must be careful of the words you speak and the words you hear. So child of God, if you want to walk in holiness, understand that the tongue must be kept at all costs. The tongue must be kept at all costs and it will help you walk in the holiness of Jesus Christ. So, child of God, get the key concept. It will help you powerfully uh, to walk in wisdom. So, that's the key concept. Don't forget it. It will help you in your Christian life. Now, in Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, uh, verses number 34. Luke 11 verse 34 The Bible says that the light of the body is the eye Therefore when thy eye is single thy whole body is full of light But when thy eye is evil thy body Also is full of darkness so you can see from the words of Jesus Christ that what the light of the body is the eye Whatever you see continuously it controls so if your eyes are full of evil thought you see things you're not supposed to see you watch movies ungodly movies all kind of things child of god it can corrupt the soul it can corrupt the mind so make sure that you watch things that will uh, lead you into the path of christ because in the spiritual realm we have portals i don't want to go into these distance but let me go a little bit into distance now uh, our body has gates are you getting it our body has gates and our eye is a contact of spirit how does demons even enter into a human body i'm going to teach you how it happens how does even legions because it is in the bible that a man possesses about thousand demons where jesus christ encountered a man on the graveyard where the, the demons that we are legions so how did the demons enter the man how did the demons even possess that man? They have to get a, a point of contact. So the eye is one of the portals through which a demon can access a human being. The mouth is a point of contact. The nose, the ears, the anus, the penis, and then the, the vagina is also a point of contact. So child of God and the forehead as well. Now, the eye is the most important. That is why ladies can seduce with their eyes that is why most ladies can seduce with their eyes people can seduce you with their eyes they will watch you lustfully and if you're not careful if they have evil spirit they can use that Jezebel spirit to manipulate you to seduce you into sexual sin so if your eye is full of darkness then the whole body cannot be holy but if your eye is full of light if your eye is always based on things that glorify God, if you are watching things that adore God, if you are 
watching things that glorify the kingdom of God, child of God, your whole body, your whole conscience, your whole thought, your whole soul, everything about you will be concerned about Jesus. But if you are always watching bad things, child of God, it will corrupt the inner soul and then you'll be full of evil thought, evil ideas, evil philosophy, evil tradition, and it's going to corrupt you. So child of God, get the key concept here that if you want to walk, if you want to walk in holiness, then you must understand the concept of the tank and then the eyes. Job said that, I have made a covenant with God that I will not look at a lady twice. Why did Job say that or make that pronoun? Because Job was an upright man. The Bible even confirmed that Job was an upright man. So the eye is very, very, very important. What you see continuously will create an idea into your inner man. What you see daily in your life will create a mindset in your child of God. Be careful of the things that you see continuously, the movies that you are watching, the kind of friends that you are going, you go to play child of God, it can corrupt you and it make you walk in what? In an ungodly way because the eye is a portal of demons. The eye is a portal of evil spirit. Either demons are possessing you or demons are controlling you. So if a demon to access you, they can use your eyes to get you. Sometimes maybe you watch a porn video continuously, continuously, con it can open the door for demons to access you. Demons, they are spiritual beings. They are very, very tiny and they are spiritual beings and then they access you through the eyes. So you must be careful of the things that you watch. You must be careful of the things that you watch because if you don't block the eye, if you don't block something that you have been watching, child of God, it can corrupt you and then make your body full of darkness. As Jesus said that the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, thy whole body is full of light. But when thy eye is evil, thy whole body also is full of darkness. So, if you want to walk in holiness, child of God, then let your eye be full of light. Let your eyes be full of light. Let your conscience be focused on things that will help you grow in the Lord. Be focused on things that will help you understand the things of God. Be focused on things that will help you understand Jesus. Be focused on things that will up upgrade you to serve God like never before. So child of God is a key concept. Now, the next key point to walk in holiness is the fear of God. Is the fear of God. The fear of God simply means that you depart from evil. By the fear of God, men depart from evil. Proverbs 16 verse 6. So, if you fear God, if you have a reverence for God, a reverential fear for God, now, we have different kinds of fear. When you get my book, it is called The Mysteries of Fear. I've given the type of fear and then the dimensions. But I'm talking about the fear of God. If you want to work in the power of God, in God's holiness, child of God, then understand the key concept of God's fearing, reverence, loving God departing from evil hating sin with a passion it will help you walk in holiness because without the fear of god you always love sin a man who does not fear god cannot walk in holiness it is a man who fears god that will depart from evil it's a man who reverence god that will love god what god loves god loves holiness god jesus christ he loves holiness Jesus Christ, he hates sin. Jesus, he hates anything that will corrupt the plan of God. So if you love God, you will fear him. If you fear God, you will hate sin. If you fear God, you will love what he loves and then hate what he hates. That is a key concept to walk in the holiness of Jesus Christ. To walk in the holiness of the kingdom. So child of God, it is a spiritual law that you must not be ignorant as in the bible job chapter 1 verse 1 
He said that Job was an upright man, a man that feared God, a man that exhaled evil, a man that he hated evil. Mm? Job, he, he, he loved God, he served God, he was a man that was after God's heart. And the Bible says that he was a man that hated evil with a passion. So child of God, get a key concept here that if you want to walk in holiness, then understand that it is part of your Christian duty to get this key concept by walking in the reverence of God, by walking in the fear of God, by departing from evil, by hating sin with a passion, by separating yourself from evil doers. Now, when I say that don't do evil, although sometimes there are some key concepts there, only approach unbelievers when the Holy Ghost tells you to go with them because the unbelievers can corrupt you. In 2 Corinthians 6, 14, say, Be ye not unequally yoked with unbelievers. So there must be an equal yoke with them. Don't equally yoke with them. If you're always with unbelievers, child of God, they can corrupt you because the holy, the unbelievers, in fact, they resist the Holy Ghost. They don't like our, the Holy Ghost. They hate the Bible. They don't even love the Word of God. So always, all the time when you're with them, child of God, they will corrupt you and they will reduce the fear of God in you. And they will corrupt your good manners because the Bible says that what? Evil communication will corrupt your good manners. So apply wisdom when you are with the unbelievers. Apply wisdom when you are the sinners because if you don't apply the wisdom of God, then they can make you lose the fear of God in you. They can counsel you. They can advise you to walk in the ways of the devil. So child of God, get the key concept it will help you uh, walk in the holiness of god in the holiness of the kingdom in the holiness of jesus christ in the holiness of christ jesus so that's the key point and now another key point to walk in god's holiness is to have dominance over the desire of the flesh have dominance over the desires of the flesh have dominance over the desire of the flesh have dominance over the desire of the flesh now in galatians chapter 5 verses are number 16 galatians chapter 5 verses number 16 paul said that what this i say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh this I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lasted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to another, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Now, you see that um, as a Christian believer, there is a spiritual war. There is a war between our flesh and then the spirit. Now, the flesh wants to have its way and then the Holy Ghost also wants to have its way. So in this dimension, understand that the desires of the flesh, for example, like adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, uh, uncleanness, witchcraft, uh, strife, malice, sedition, envy, madness, drunkenness, all these things are the things of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, the fruit of the flesh. All these desires are battling the Holy Ghost in us. So it is a key concept that you must learn how to walk in the spirit. If you walk in the the spirit child of God, you can dominate the flesh. And how do you walk in spirits? I have a book on that one. It is called How to Walk and Live in the Spirit. But I'll give you just some keys here. Now, fasting is very, very important. Fasting sometimes afflicts the soul and the body. When we fast and pray, we empower our spirit man and then what? And then uh, silence the flesh when uh, we fast and pray we are able to 
charge our inner man to receive supernatural strength from God. It's a key that you must know, child of God. Don't be a uh, too carnal. Because Paul says that what? But I keep my body under subjection. I keep what? My body under subjection. So it is a Christian duty for every believer to keep his body under subjection through fasting and then through prayers. Because if you allow the desire to control you all the time, child of God, you become a carnal Christian. And carnal Christians cannot walk in the path of God. Carnal Christians cannot walk in God's holiness. So you have to understand that the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Ghost, which we all know is love, joy, peace, meekness, temperance, faith, uh, patience. Now, the love of God in us must come out. The real love, the agape, the unconditional love must come out. Our love for God must exceed the things of the world. If our love for God is more in tune and then connected, the flesh cannot dominate us. If our mind is focused on the things of God all the time, for example, hearing God's messages, hearing sermons, hearing gospel music, having time for the word of God, having your prayer time, your quiet time, all these things are spiritual things that when you embark upon all the time, you can have dominance over the desires of the flesh. If you pray more in the Holy Ghost, it is part of a spiritual transaction that you are doing and it will give you power over the flesh. But if all the time you are watching maybe uh, secular or ungodly videos, it will empower and then recharge the flesh. If you don't have time to fast and pray, child of God, it can also give more strength to the flesh, dominate you. So, it is a key concept that you have to know that if you want to walk in God's holiness, then you must dominate the flesh, the fruit of the flesh. Because if you allow the flesh to control a child of God, you will find it very difficult to walk in holiness. And child of God, get my book, get a book, get my book. It is called How to Walk and Live in the Spirit. I've given more revelation on those teachings that will help you powerfully. And so, child of God, get the key concept. It will empower you. It will charge you. So, in summary, I've taught that you must first understand that holiness is a mandate unto all Christians. As the Bible says in Hebrews 12, 14, that follow peace after all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And I also said that in the Bible, in Matthew 5, 48, that be therefore perfect even as your father, which is a perfect. And then I gave you some keys on that number one. We must accept Jesus Christ by confessing Jesus Christ into your heart, into your spirit, into your soul. Then you get the first door to enter into God's holiness. Number two. I said that your heart must prepare for God. Your heart, hmm? your heart must prepare for God, because out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. So your heart must be circumcised. Number three, I talked about the Word of God, the Holy Bible, the Logos. By having time with the Word of God, it sanctifies the soul and empeds the soul. Number four, I talk about having time with the Holy Ghost a true. A fellowship with the Holy Ghost. I've had time with the Holy Ghost through spiritual songs and prayer. It helps you walk in holiness. Uh, number five, I talk about the tongue and then the eye. That our tongue are full of power. If you can control your tongue, child of God, you can control your whole body and then the eye as well. I also talk about the fear of God. That the fear of God is to depart from evil and to hate evil with a passion. And the last key, I talked about dominance over the desires of the flesh. That when we walk in the spirit, we shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So, child of God, I believe that God has spoken unto you. If you are not born again, 
and you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, it is never too late. Pray right after me from your heart, and Jesus will come into your heart. You say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please forgive me of all my sins. Say, Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart and set me free in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed after me, believe that all your sins are washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. Find a Bible-believing church and fellowship with them. Um, build a prayer life on your own. Have time with the Word of God. Uh, buy a Holy Bible on your buy one for yourself a hard copy for yourself and then feed on it it will empower you so once again uh this is pastor diodu henry apiakran i believe god has spoken unto you let me pray for you father i release your grace upon your servants upon your sons upon your daughters i plead the blood of jesus over their lives set them free from every attack of the wicked one in the name of jesus you are blessed you are highly favored god bless you